Today, I want to dive into an important issue that's affecting millions of Canadians, how the government is handling the housing crisis. There's been a lot of talk, promises, and plans over the years, but the reality is we're being misled. The truth is when it comes to housing, the responsibility lies with the three levels of government, federal, provincial, and municipal. But let's break down how each level is involved and why promises we're hearing about aren't translating into real solutions. Let's start at the top with the federal government. They're the ones who set the stage for the entire economy through their monetary and physical policies. This includes controlling and lending the environment which directly affects mortgages and housing affordability. They also oversee Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, which is a key player in the housing market. So when people say that housing isn't federal responsibility, they're being misled. The bigger picture, the federal government's decision rippled down from the interest rates to housing availability. If they don't get it right, the effects are felt nationwide. Next, we have the provincial governments, which also play a critical role. The province are responsible for planning and development, including how the land is used. They decide what areas can be developed and how resources like green belts are managed. They also have a say in the transit and labor policies, which are crucial for any housing development. Provinces essentially create the framework that municipalities work within. Without proper provincial planning and support, municipalities are left with limited tools to manage the housing needs for their communities. Finally, at municipal level, there's a common misconception that the municipalities have the most control over housing because their issues building permits. While it's true the municipalities are one who implement the plans, they're constraints by frameworks set by the provinces. Municipalities decide when and where to issue permits, but they have to work with what they've given. Lately, we've seen the federal government stepping in more directly with initiatives like the Housing Accelerator Fund, which aims to increase housing density by working directly with municipalities. But even this approach has its challenges as it bypasses provincial involvement, creating a patchwork of policies that may not align with broader regional planning. Now let's talk about the government's latest housing plan, which has been making headlines. They're announcing a plan to unlock federal lands to build homes, but this isn't the first time we've heard this. The promise to unlock federal lands has been repeated since 2015, and yet, where are the homes? The idea sounds great, using public land for affordable housing, but will these homes be actually be available for you or me? The way is being presented, it seems like these are primarily being social housing units controlled by the government. They're talking about leasing the land to developers rather than selling it, which raises the question about how effective this plan will be in the addressing the broader housing crisis. Let's rewind to 2015, when the government first promised the inventory all available federal lands and buildings to see what could be repurposed for affordable housing. They said they'd make these lands available at low cost in communities with pressing need for affordable housing. That was nine years ago. And we're still hearing the same promise today. In 2017, during the federal budget announcement, they restated this commitment, saying they would make more federal lands available for affordable housing. Then in 2023, they repeated the promise, this time a focus on building more homes on public land. But despite all these announcements, we're seeing little or no progress in making these homes a reality. Most recent version of this plan involves unlocking 56 federal land sites for housing development. The government is proposing to release these lands to developers, supposedly to prevent them from buying up the land and profiting excessively. But there's a lot we don't know about how this will work. Will these homes truly be affordable or will they be primarily serve as a social housing, leaving middle class Canadians out of the cold? It looks like the focus on social housing, which while necessary, doesn't address the needs of the broader population, especially the middle class who are increasingly finding it difficult to afford a house. Let's take a moment to look at some numbers. Housing competition in Canada have fluctuated over the years 
often correlating with dynamic recessions. During each recession, housing completions drop significantly. Most recent data has shown that competitions were already declining. And with economists predicting another recession, it's likely that we'll see another drop. The government's current effort to increase housing starts are essentially trying to prop up the market that's struggling to keep pace with the demand. But even these are unlikely to result in significant increase in housing availability in the near term. One of the most striking visual illustrated the changes of housing market over the years is comparing how starting off in life used plenty of properties available. While there were challenges, the dream of home ownership has available for many. Today, things look very different. Young people are starting out with more money, yes, but they're also burdened with more debt. Credit card debt, car loans, student loans, you name it. That despite having more money on paper, their purchasing power has been eroded by inflation. When you look at the housing market today, opportunities are scarce. Many properties are already snapped up by the investors and speculators, driving up prices and leaving fewer options for the average buyer. Renting has become a norm for many, with sky-high prices that make it difficult to save for down payment on a home. Even if you do manage to buy a property, it's likely to be as much higher cost than the previous generations faced and the financial strain can be overwhelming. So where does this leave us? The government continues to make promises about making life more affordable, but the reality on the ground tells the different story. We need solutions that address the needs of all Canadians, not just those who qualify for social housing. The middle class in particular is being squeezed out of the housing market and without meaningful action, the dream of home ownership will remain out of reach for many. That's all for this week. I want to hear what you think. Are you seeing these challenges in your own life? What do you think the government should be doing differently? Let's discuss it in the comments below. If this issue matters to you, don't just watch, get involved. Share this video with friends, family to spread awareness. Leave a comment below with your thoughts and experiences and let's create a conversation that pushes for real change.